Alright, so in our last video we added some fake camera movement that made things look really nice. So since they improved things so much, I think we should add even more camera movement. Um, <laughs> what I mean by this is that we kind of panned around him. As the car moves, we panned with it, and as he transformed, we panned so that the camera moved up. I'm going to go ahead and change my resolution to quarter so things move faster, or actually half. And I'm also going to turn off motion blur so things move faster. Um, but yeah, we, you can see that we panned and then the camera just kind of stopped moving. Now I want it to have the illusion of like a handheld camera, just so that it kind of feels more real and less like an animation. So to do that, we could just drop a bunch of keyframes as we go throughout the video to make it look like someone's holding the video. But that's a really lengthy process and it'd take forever, and it's not as natural as we could be. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm actually going to import some handheld footage. So I did control I and I'm going to import this footage right here 00184. So if we do that, we'll have this handheld footage and if we double click this we can play it and you can see that all it is is just me holding a camera in front of this box. And now from this we can extract the handheld motion and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to drag this on top of this composition. Um, I'm going to drag the footage just so we're in the middle of it, since at the beginning I might have shake, shaken a little bit after pressing record. And again, this is nothing but just handheld footage of a box. And I'm going to make a new layer, layer, new, null object. And I'm going to click this footage again, this is 00184. And I'm going to click track motion. Now if you don't see this, go to window, tracker. So, window tracker, and then track motion. So this gives us a track point. So we can zoom in on this, and we can see that this is what After Effects is going to track. So you don't want to track something like this white space, because there's so much white space that there's nothing to track. After Effects doesn't look at the whole image, it just looks at this track point and the area around it, the area in this box, actually. So we want to track something distinct that we can constantly say, like, we can constantly look at and see the direction that it's moving. So I'm going to expand it a little bit. The more you expand it, the longer it will take. And if you have a slow computer, this could just take forever. But this is the size I'm going to use. I'm going to just put it on these words since all these letters are, they're repeating letters, but it doesn't look like there's any repeating letters like this inside this box. So after we do that, we're going to check what our motion target is. And it automatically set it to null one which is what we want. So I'm going to press Analyze Forward. And this is going to take a minute. Alright, so once it's tracked about 18 seconds of the video, which is how long our composition is, you can stop it, and then you can press Apply. Press OK on this window, because we want it to apply to both X and Y dimensions. And then you can look at Null 1, and you can see that it dropped all of this position data, all of these keyframes for us. And all these keyframes are the motion of the camera. So I'm going to collapse this, and I'm going to just delete this piece of footage because we no longer need it. So how do we get this layer to inherit this handheld camera motion? To do that, you use this pick whip right here, this little squiggly thing. If you click and hold it, you get this fun little whip and then you can just drag it onto null 1. So what that'll do is it'll make this layer inherit all of that position data. If we press U on this, we can see all those keyframes again. And by pick whipping it, we've parented this time remapping layer to null 1. This layer is a child of this layer. So if we play that, we should see not only our manual keyframes, but also all of these keyframes from our motion tracking. So let's check that out. Alright, so as you can see, that looks pretty good. So now we've got not only our manual keyframes, but also we've got this handheld camera data that allows the camera to just stay alive and keep moving even after we manually keyframe it. So that's just a really nice touch I like to add. It's not necessary, and obviously there are shots where you wouldn't want it there. But it's something I've seen a lot, and it's something I really like to add just to make things feel more real, especially in just short little stop motions like this where nothing really happens, things are just standing around. 
I think it's a really nice touch. And don't forget to turn motion blur back on for this layer. It's barely noticeable, but it's there, especially if you have a quick jerk with your handheld camera motion. And remember, you could use any camera motion you want. So you could film a box or whatever, and you can move the camera in whatever way you want. You could even theoretically move it so that it'll match these manual keyframes we set. And really, that would be a lot better than setting manual keyframes. Of course, it'd be a lot harder to get the timing down, but the power of motion tracking is really cool, and I think this is a really cool way to use it. So that's pretty much it for adding camera movement.